This is a woman's ward in a mental hospital. An important change has taken place here within recent years. With the introduction of drug therapy, the once highly disturbed climate has almost disappeared. In most cases, the problem of violence has been solved. The patient has been calmed, but she is still sick. She still needs help if she is to find her way back to mental health. Because today's patient is more accessible, because the burden of custodial care has been greatly reduced, there is here a new opportunity for those concerned with the patient's day-to-day -day care. Especially challenging is the opportunity available to the staff nurse to play a major role through a therapeutic nurse-patient relationship. Susan Davis looks upon these patients for the first time. Unlike patients in other hospitals she has known, she will find no charts upon their beds that point the way to recovery. Still, she knows that for many, there is a way, but the chances of finding it rest in large part upon her. This is the opportunity and the challenge. And we have a television set. This afternoon, I want to show you some of the other things. Now let's, I think we better go. <gasps> oh, I'm so sorry. I, I hope I didn't hurt you. Are you all right? Uh, well, I'm sorry I wasn't watching where I oh, was Oh, no, going. that's not what I mean. It's the way Trudy reacted. When she's in one of her walking moods, generally the slightest touch sends her into a tantrum. Then we all tend to leave her alone. This is the first rational response I've seen in her in five years. Well, come on, we'll talk about it later. There are others, so many other things I want to talk to you about. Uh... The human mind presses continually toward a feeling of comfort when the real world cannot supply even its minimal need, it may build a world of its own, with its own language, its own mode of conduct. Psychiatric therapy is the careful search for the gaps in skill or information which prevent the patient from using the real world, which make it necessary for her to create a world subject to her exclusive control. It consists in finding the bridge that exists between these two worlds and leading the patient back over it to reality. That's all in the ward right now. How many more are there? The nine out of the OT shops and four work in the kitchen, two are at the dentist, two out in home visits. It's nine, 14, 17. Your full load is 63, and that makes uh, 46 that you've seen already. Where's, uh, you, know, you know, the patient we bumped into? Uh, Trudy, uh, Trudy Calvin? Yes, we didn't see her again. I'm probably gone back to bed. Oh. Withdrawal, that's her pattern. She spends most of every day in bed, sometimes for days at a time, but she never talks. Until she reaches an explosive state that takes her out of bed and she starts pacing. Then if someone so much as touches her, she starts a violent stream of abuse. That's why I'm so interested in her reaction to you. Maybe you reminded her of someone. Yes, I was wondering about that. This may be worth following up. Let's talk to Dr. Colby about it when he makes his rounds. There may be something in your personality that would... 
No, there's no reason why you shouldn't go about it in your own way. I think maybe Mrs. Porter is right. You probably have some special personal ingredient that she responds to. It may be the way you look, the sound of your voice, something in your manner. We don't know. But um, if it's something personal, aren't we taking a chance? It's always something personal, Miss Davis. In addition to your training, it's the particular personal ingredient you bring to a patient, any patient, that makes you valuable. And that's especially true with a mental patient. Students so often seem to be at a loss when they come to a patient with nothing in their hands. A pitcher of water, a food tray, a thermometer. They seem to need a prop. I know what they mean. I often feel like I'm not doing anything for my patients unless I'm bringing them something. You yourself are the most sensitive instrument we have to work with. Now then, I know you'll also be working with other patients, but in the case of Trudy, of course, you'll have to arrange to give her a little more time, 10 or 15 minutes a day, as many days as possible. And do you suppose you could keep a rather detailed record? It'll be helpful to me. Yes, it'll help me too. This is a report of my first week with Trudy. When I went to see her for the first time, she was lying on her back and I knew she saw me. Hello. I'm Miss Davis, a registered nurse. And I'm going to be working on this ward from now on. I'm going to try and spend some time with you every day I'm on duty. Will you tell me your name? Well, until you tell me what you'd like to be called, I'll call you Mrs. Calvin. So you thought you had some special magic. Well, take a good look and think again. And start from the beginning. I remained with Trudy for 10 minutes, but I didn't try talking anymore. Before I left, though, I told her I'd be back the next day. For the next four days, I got the same response from Trudy. And practically all I did was sit next to her bed. Then on the sixth day, I noticed a change. Trudy began to relax. Her clenched hands released the covers. She opened her eyes slightly. She glanced at me several times, but looked away quickly when my eyes met hers. When it was time for me to leave, she turned her head and looked at me. Accept the patient as she is, without judgment and without reproach. The first step in helping a patient in the painful process of re-education is to create for her a climate of comfort and trust. She needs, first and foremost, to feel accepted as a person, exactly as she is. End of the third week. Things have been going pretty well. Trudy seems to know when I'm with her. This morning, when I went to see Trudy, I took a magazine along with me. On the way, I stopped with some of the other patients. When I reached the door of her room, I met one of our psychiatric aides coming out. Good morning, Mrs. Johnson. Hi. How's Trudy today? Not so good today. She didn't want to be bathed or have her hair combed. I managed, but it's not one of her good days.
You look pretty today, Mrs. Calvin. Oh, your hair is so bright and shiny. <laughs> you look just like the weather. It's a, it's a bright, shiny, crisp day outside. It's um, the kind of day that, that makes you feel full of pep, makes you want to look through the magazine at the new fall style. Oh, oh. something is wrong. Have you seen Why is she pulling style? away like that? Is it something I've They're said? Isn't that funny? It's something I'm doing? It's just a straight, straight piece of material. And just why do I keep rattling on like this? Talk, talk, talk. Calvin, you know what I was thinking the What's other day? What's bothering me? I was thinking that if we took your hair and we put some curlers in the back. Kept right on talking about anything at all. By the end of the visit, Trudy had her face to the wall. When it was time to leave, I told her I'd be back tomorrow. But I didn't get any response from her. You were obviously anxious. In thinking about it, can you account for it? No. Actually, I was looking forward to my visit with Trudy today. Yes? Well, there was something. Uh, just as I was about to enter the room, I met Mrs. Johnson coming up. She told me Trudy wasn't having a good day, and I hadn't expected that. Well, then what happened? Well, I went into the room, and I sat down, and her face was to the wall. She wasn't sitting up. No. And then the last couple of Before she can understand her patient, the nurse must first understand herself, seeking always to recognize her own behavior. For if she accepts the patient as she is, so also must she accept herself. Although the patient may express disturbed emotions, the nurse, if she's to be an effective therapeutic tool, must recognize her own emotions and control them. Let's take a look here, Miss Davis, and see what happened. You were looking forward to your visit with Trudy today, but because of Mrs. Johnson's report, you were already anxious when you went in to see her. The minute you started to talk, Trudy felt this, felt that something was disturbing you. She reacted by withdrawing. In turn, you became even more anxious and tried to relieve this anxiety by a flood of talk. Then, of course, Trudy completely withdrew and the situation was out of hand. Poor Trudy. That's why control of anxiety in the nurse is so important. It's one of the big problems in psychiatric nursing. And that control comes only by examining your experience. Next time anything like this happens, if you feel you can't deal with your own anxiety, just try sitting quietly with your patient. Sometimes silence can be an effective tool. You are important. You are respected. You are accepted. This is what the patient must feel. Sometimes it can be said in words. Sometimes only by being there, sitting silently. Presence alone is reassuring. The patient should come to feel the nurse's confidence in her and her capacity to change and improve. I have been working with Trudy now for almost two months. Today's visit came after a number of days of just sitting with her in almost complete silence. It was like starting all over again. Toward the end of this visit, I got the feeling that Trudy had accepted me again, to the point where I might try talking with her. Mrs. Calvin? I'll be going in five minutes. I'll come back later. I was pretty busy for the next hour and didn't get back to Trudy until about two o'clock. Mrs. Calvin, would you like me to stay with you a while? That 
was the wrong way to put it. I was asking her to make a decision about me, to take the responsibility. This is something we should decide together. I'll go now. But I'll be back. I returned about an hour later. Well, here I am, Mrs. Calvin. Uh-huh. This was my first audible response from Trudy since I bumped into her in the corridor. Only this time we worked it out together. It's now been three months since I first saw Trudy Calvin. This morning she was pacing by her bed when I came to see her. As I came through the door, I had a moment of apprehension. Always before, this pacing had meant an overactive state that took Trudy out on the ward, walking compulsively up and down the corridor. When I came closer, though, I could see she was quite calm and glad to see me. We walked out on the ward together. Trudy became a little tense, but was not unaware of the activities on the ward. Her attention seemed to center on Mrs. Johnson, who was giving a manicure to a patient. This was an opportunity to help Trudy become a part of life on the ward. It was an important step and worth trying. I told her I'd be back in a few minutes and moved away to a point where I could watch her. Every small gain is part of an overall pattern that may in time lead to recovery. There are few moments of high drama in the building of a therapeutic relationship, only searching steps tentative feeling for secure ground. My fourth month on the ward. Today, Trudy spent most of her time in the recreation area, but at first she took no part in the activity. Calvin, would you like to dance? All right, maybe after in a little while. She just didn't seem ready for participation, either verbal or physical. beginning to reach out a little. How could I help her? Mrs. Calvin, maybe you'd like to dance now? Let's go out here a little, little further. Let's see now. 
That shoe is too fast. We can go. We can put one foot out and then put the other foot together. And if you start on your on your left foot, okay? Left foot out and your right foot together. Your right foot out and your left foot together. Your left foot out and your right foot together. And your right foot out and your left foot together. Your left foot out and your right foot together. <laughs> That's wonderful, Mrs. Calvin. That's so good. Well, that's good. That's very good. Do you think she's ready to make a decision? I mean, some little thing. I think maybe we can try another step with Trudy. Yes, as you say, something very small. Next time you bring her fruit juice, offer her a choice. See what she does. Calvin, here's some fruit juice for you. Uh. Which do you want? Tomato or pineapple? Which do you want? You choose. She went on like that for about 20 minutes. What did you do? Did you try to stop her? No. I just sat down next to her and stayed there. Good. That was right. It's good for a patient to be able to express negative feelings. Actually, it's often a healthy sign. But most important is that you accepted it calmly, without retaliation, without reproach. You stayed there with her and let her know she wasn't being rejected. Then I did do the right thing. Exactly the right thing. When you've been here However long. extreme her behavior may be, the patient must feel that she herself is not disapproved of. This is a basic principle in psychiatric nursing, and the nurse learns to apply it through her experience with patient after patient. The therapeutic relationship is a process through which two people grow stronger, the patient and the nurse. Trudy and I have been working together for over six months now. 
Lately, she has been spending a part of every day on the ward. She still doesn't talk, but is increasingly aware of what others are doing. Where a patient lives, and the people who look after her, can be her two best channels for recovery. They can lead to social participation with other patients, with ward personnel, and finally, visitors. Symbols of the real world. This was visiting day, and Trudy was to have her first visitor since I came on the ward. We just got a call that Trudy's visitors are not coming today. Oh, dear. She's been up for hours. She just could hardly wait to get dressed this morning. I thought maybe you'd better tell her. Yes. Uh, could you take over here for a while? I have a message for you, Mrs. Calvin. Your sister won't be able to come to see you today. Gradually, her crying subsided. We sat in silence for a while until it was time for me to leave. Mrs. Calvin, I'm going now. I'll be back tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. She cried, isn't it? It's the first time I've ever seen her cry. Of course, we have criers, but not Trudy. That's it. She cried when anyone might feel like crying. She was disappointed. That's good. Well, Trudy's made a great deal of progress. Her upsets are much less frequent, of much shorter duration, and much less violent. I'd say her reaction to the experience was encouraging. As you know, we frequently learn more from a negative experience than when things roll along smoothly. Then I needn't have felt so badly when the call came through. I just hated to tell Miss Davis about it. Sure you did, but we have to face these things. Otherwise, a pattern of avoidance comes about. And a patient like Trudy, who is easily upset, there's always a tendency to keep her quiet and undisturbed, even to the point of leaving her alone. And that's the worst thing that could happen. What Trudy needs now is to have as many people as possible interested in her. That's what Mrs. Porter and I were talking about the other day. I think it's time for Trudy to begin to relate more to others and less to me. I was wondering, Doctor, what we could do about it. Well, I think Mrs. Johnson can do some of the things that you've been doing, and I think you can arrange with one of the student nurses to spend some time with Trudy. In general, if everyone on the ward is fully aware of Trudy's needs, it's going to make a big difference. All right. Now, let's, let's discuss Mrs. Landers. It's eight months now. Trudy seems to be showing some real progress. She still does not talk to anyone, but there are other indications of improvement. Although she still waits for me to bring her out on the ward, she spends most of her day there. 
the conduct toward Trudy has changed. As I attend other patients, I notice that she is not left alone as much as she used to be. There are some, in spite of the heavy schedule, who can always find time for at least a warm hello. Patients who used to avoid her have fallen in with the new attitude toward Trudy. Was the water warm enough for you today? This morning, yeah, I helped Trudy get dressed. Want to brush your teeth, Mrs. Calvin? Yes. There it was. Trudy had spoken for the first time. It uh, feels good to brush your teeth, doesn't it? No, it doesn't feel good to brush my teeth. It doesn't. No, it doesn't. You have a nice voice, Mrs. Calvin. Why do you call me Mrs. Calvin? I've been waiting for you to tell me what to call you. Don't you want me to call you Mrs. Calvin? Everybody else calls me Trudy. You can call me Trudy. All right. There is still a long way to go, but Trudy has come a long way. The road back to mental health is never clearly defined. It takes the work of many people to feel out the path and help the patient to travel it. And not one patient, but many, are their daily concern. In this complex pattern of therapy, the nurse has a vital role to play. She comes to her patients with the most important and sensitive instrument she can possibly use, herself. Her first need, then, is to know herself, to know her skills and strengths and how to use them. She will learn to relate to the needs of each individual patient. She will develop inventiveness, finding ways to bring her patients closer to reality. The nurse will look upon her patient, first of all, as a human being, and think always in terms of what is best for her. These are the qualities that make a better nurse and a better person.